Good morning, IE Church. I hope you're awake. I hope you're ready. Uh, we are going to sing together this morning. We're going to dive into the Word of God 
Now I gave this encouragement a couple weeks ago, but I want to remind you, implore you, empower you to not click on that Facebook video right next to this link. Uh, don't click on the YouTube video of how to change your oil or how to get rich quick, but let's totally engage this morning in our service. Uh, you can do this really cool thing with your phone where if you have an iPhone, you can hold down the side button and it actually turns off your phone. Don't worry, it'll come back on. Uh, but right now, I want to encourage our entire fellowship to really engage in our service here this morning. Uh, we have an awesome, awesome treat. Our brother, all the way from the Middle East, uh, Mofid Tome, is going to be preaching the word for us. And we're so excited to hear from him. He is a man of great power and conviction. Uh, he is a man of God. We're so grateful uh, that he is our brother in Christ, and we're going to be able to hear from him this morning. On another note, I did want to make mention of something um, that I'm sure we're probably all aware of during this time. And I, I want to take some time here to share personally uh, about how just deeply troubled and hurt my heart is. Uh, to see what's going on throughout our nation is really just evil. Um, and, and I know that it's taken a lot to process and see uh, just the different evil that's been embarked on people. Um, and, and to that I want to I want to say a special uh, message to my brothers and sisters of color uh, that I hear you and I see you, I feel for you, I'm hurting for you. And I personally want to learn how to practically support you and also how to practically be a man of God during this time where evil uh, is hurting so many different people. I also want to give encouragement to our church that there's going to be a lot of content posted in the next week or so in regards of how we can be Christians during this time. How we can represent Jesus and fight evil and stand up for what God and Jesus stood up for. Um, and so stay tuned to our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We really want to encourage everyone to look at the different things that are going to be posted online uh, so that we, we can really be a light in this very, very dark world. Uh, I also want to throw out another prayer request for George Saldana. I did get word that he was able to uh, come home from the hospital sooner than expected, but if you can please keep praying for our brother George uh, to make a speedy recovery from his procedure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer, and reminder, don't click on the video you see. You're tempted. I know you were. But we're going to pray and fully engage in this service here together this morning. Let's bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Dearly Father, uh, God, I am so grateful to uh, be able to join with the rest of my family uh, in worshiping you, singing together, hearing your word. Uh, but God, I feel like more importantly, what's on my heart, I want to lift my prayers to you uh, about what's just going on in our nation. Uh, God, the evil, the injustice, the hurt, the pain, the, the destruction, the chaos that is just so prevalent in people's lives. God, I know you are, you mourn for your people. For your children, uh, God, that, that are just being uh, wrongly treated. And I know that you so badly want to deploy your army, your spiritual army, the Christians, the followers of Jesus, to set an example, uh, to win people over with love, um, and to support those who need supporting, God. I, I pray that as a family here in the IE, we can uh, bring glory to your name. Um, by how we stand up for what Jesus would stand up for. We speak against evil and overcome it with your love. God, I also want to say a special word of prayer for our brother George Saldana, that you continue to bring a healing for him, God. Be with his family. Uh, we, we love George so much. He means so much to our congregation here, and we're so grateful that you've been watching over him during this time, God. We're so grateful we get to hear uh, from Mufid, God. Speak through him in a powerful way. We love you so much. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. God and King, for He is good, He is above all things. Let's take it down. Sing praise, sing praise with a mighty hand and an outstretched. 
outstretched arms. Love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. 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 From the rising to the setting sun. Grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. and uh, this is the time weekly where we get to take the communion and I want to base the communion message today based on the crises that we have at hand you know all the different uh, injustices that we've seen that we've felt I want to be able to address them from a biblical perspective and also hopefully through the eyes of Jesus in Genesis chapter 1 Verse 27, it says that God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So God tells us through the scriptures that every single one of us was made in his image. Whatever race you are, whatever gender you are, we were all created in God's image. But Satan longs to divide us through the sin that exists in this world. And he also longs to divide us through ignorance, even ignorance that exists in the most well-intentioned of people. And the tools that he uses along with these things to divide us are hatred, distrust, abuse of authority, marginalization, racism, and stereotyping. For a long time now, it's become obvious to us all that there's been a horrific mistreatment of African Americans and people of color in this country. It's escalated many times over the decades to demonstrations, riots, and protests. We may not like this, agree with this, 
or even understand this. But criminality does not solely bring this about. But impunity for abuse and racism is what often rules and fuels these responses. It's been said that rioting is the voice of the unheard. Confusion, chaos, racial divide, and silence can rule in the midst of these troubling times. And we as disciples of Jesus need to approach these issues with the eyes, ears, and heart of Jesus, seeking to understand and not judge, seeking to love and not condemn, seeking to help the oppressed and the mistreated. Love brings healing to this world, and God longs to use us to bring this about. Jesus did this while he walked on this earth, and even more so with his death and resurrection. He came to model true love for us, an imperfect and sinful people, so that we could in turn show it to others. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 through 18, the Bible reads that we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This, this scripture speaks to the love that disciples ought to have for one another. We know that we have gone from death to life if we, in fact, love each other as Jesus loved us. And it gives an example of what that should mean and what that should look like to us as citizens of God's kingdom. It means that we lay down our lives for each other as Jesus laid down his life for us. If we see a brother or sister in any situation where they're hurting, our hearts need to go out to them. We need to lend a hand. We need to be a listening ear. We need to be a shoulder for people to cry on. We need to be people of understanding that seek to empathize with those that are oppressed. I wanna to communicate to my brothers and sisters in the communities of color in our world that I feel for what's going on right now. And I could only imagine what you're feeling. I wanna understand I'm with you. I'm here for you. I want to be a listening ear. I want us as disciples to be able to have the response that Jesus had, the response that he would want us to have, to ask the question, to have the heart that says similarly, I want to understand. I'm with you. I know you're hurting and I see you. What are some practicals that we could apply that shows our love for each other and for our communities? Being able to express to our brothers and sisters of color or our communities and neighbors of color, can we pray together? Will you share your experiences with me so I can better understand? What are you feeling right now? Can I be a listening ear to you? You know, right now is a very discouraging time for so many people. And it's okay to be discouraged and angry about what's going on right now. These are normal human feelings that we all have and we all should have. As Christians, we may feel angry and we probably should feel angry. We're probably confused and don't know what to do with those feelings. As I said, it's okay to feel it's only human, 
But I want to encourage us to decide to love as Jesus loved us. Let's decide to be here for one another as a spiritual family. Even as Satan tries to divide us based on race, different life experiences, differing political views, let's remember that we are all made in the image of God and that our identity is found in Him. And the proof of that love is displayed in our actions towards one another. That's what Jesus died for. That's what He went to the cross for, to be able to bring us together, unified as one people, in spite of race, in spite of differences, that we could be completely unified in love. One day we will be together with the Father in heaven because of how Jesus sacrificed and showed his love on the cross for us. I know that there are many questions that we have right now. Again, there's a lot of confusion. You know, we look at our brothers and sisters that are hurting and how do we support them and how do we love them? And I gave some examples of that, but I want us to look deep in our hearts and to strive to be like Jesus, even though there may be a lot of confusion and complexity to these issues. I want us even to be able to consider that we have brothers and sisters that work in law enforcement. And how do we bring them into the conversation right now, into the fold, and be able to unify where Satan is trying to divide? We want justice for the oppressed. You know, we seek justice for our brothers and sisters that are hurting and those that have been mistreated. Let's do it through the love that Jesus has shown us. Let's remember what Jesus died for on the cross. Let's go to him right now in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today hurting, confused, troubled in our hearts for all the events that are taking place, not just now, but things that have happened for decades, maybe for hundreds of years. God, just mistreatment and oppression of our brothers and sisters and our communities of color. God, I pray that we could be people that seek to understand and that have the love of Christ in our hearts. God, help us to reach out, to not avoid conversations, to not stay silent during this time. I pray that we're able to bring people within the church and even outside of the church together to have tough conversations that need to be had, to be able to express our hearts to one another wherever we may be and that the love of Jesus may abound in those conversations, that we may be able to express a gratitude for you, that only because of you could these conversations and these topics be talked about, be discussed. I thank you, God, for Jesus, the fact that he saw us valuable enough to die for. We are humbled by that, and we pray that through this crisis, we're able to stay unified as Christians. Despite our many differences, help us to see Jesus through all of this and his love for us, that we may be able to imitate it and show it to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Feet of 
My name is James Counts, and now we've come to the part of our service where we prepare to give up our finances. To help us to have a true sacrificial heart, I'd like for us to look at the heart of King David when he gave in 2 Samuel chapter 24. See, earlier, to give you a little background, David had sinned, and he wanted to sacrifice to God to get back close to God and to honor God. He didn't have an altar to which he could sacrifice on, and he needed the sacrificial animals, which he didn't have. He was told that Aruna had everything that he needed. All he needed to do was to go see Aruna. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 20, let's look and read. It says, When Aruna looked and saw the king and his men coming towards him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. Aruna says, why has the Lord the king come to your servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so that I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague of the people may be stopped. Aruna said to David, let my Lord the king take whatever he pleases and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and here are the threshing sleds and ox yokes for the wood. O king Aruna gives all this to the king. Aruna also said, may the Lord your God accept you. But David replied to Aruna, no, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offering and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered prayer on behalf of the land and the plague on Israel has stopped. Did you notice David's response? David said, I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. David understood that a true sacrifice isn't in the amount that you give, but from the place that you give it, from the heart. See, David was known for being a man after God's own heart. Because in good times, in bad times, in times are up, when times are down, he always gave from a meaningful place when it came to giving anything to the Lord. And I know that times are difficult right now for a lot of people, but I hope that we can imitate the same heart that David had and still give today. Give out of a good place, a place of sacrifice. 
You see, we must notice that scriptures never mentioned the amount that David offering, offered, but it only said that he gave. You see, the screen will show you the various ways that we can give sacrificially through the app, through online, or even through text. And lastly, I also want to remind you, we recently collected our annual special missions contribution for the needs of our brothers and sisters locally and also in Africa. If anyone can, would still like to give for that particular focus, please note that on your gifts for, and our African brothers and sisters will be incredibly grateful for your sacrificial heart and your sacrificial gift. Let's pray. Father, we know that you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And Father, we could not do anything without you. And Father, anything that we ever decide to give is only out of what you've already given to us first. And so, Father, take our offering, Father. Help us to have a sacrificial heart. Father, take this offering and multiply it, Father, for those who have so little right now. Father, we need you and we love you with all of our heart. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.
Hello, my brothers and sisters. It's an honor to be able to share with you the Word of God this morning. Uh, the title of my sharing is Ride the Waves of Change. My first point is live by faith, not by sight. You know, all, of, all over the world, we're faced now by waves, unexpected waves, sudden waves that really uh, changed everything we have actually been in control of, changed every plan that we have set. And you know, as people, we don't like change. We don't like sudden change. We don't like unexpected change. We do all our best in our life to control everything. We actually save, we plan, we buy all kind of insurance, uh, we buy all kind of assets. Everything we do, we want to make sure that we are prepared to what is coming. You know, this reminds me of a water park that we used to take our children, our children to when, when they were little. Uh, and that water park name was Waves. And what's special about this park is there is a big swimming pool that actually create waves. And it's definitely controlled waves. We know the time when it will start. There's a bell that will ring. Now the waves will start. So we know how the wave starts and how high it will be, how strong it will be, and when it will end. So it was amazing. It was a nice idea. But the thing is, these waves were controlled. We knew that there was no risk, no fear, nothing to worry. My wife would go with my, uh, with my son when he was little and she's pregnant and she would go there happy, enjoying that kind of waves. But these waves have no fear and no danger. You know, the sad side of that story is many of us today as Christians, we live this kind of Christianity the controlled Christianity, the Christianity that we know what's coming ahead, our time with God, the church, the meetings, the di discipling time. As long as I know what's ahead of me, as long as I know that what's planned this week is going to work just according to my plan, I'm fine. I am enjoying this controlled comfort Christianity. And you know, this is this is really challenging for so many Christians. We know all the details of our schedule. No surprises, no fear, nothing to worry about. No battles to win souls. No actually miracles of victories that are uncommon. Everything is actually common. It's called Christianity or comfort Christianity. I don't know. So many of us live this comfort Christianity. You know, for many of us, we're fine with that. You know, this is great. This is what we want. We don't want unexpected things to happen as Christians. And you know, in, in James chapter one, the Bible talks about, you know, whatever you ask God in faith, he is generous to give you. And he will definitely give you. But the scriptures continue to say that if we doubt, like a, a, a tossed wave by the wind, we are getting nothing from God. So if this is our expectation of Christianity, we're fine with that, discomfort Christianity. This is what we're going to get from God. We're going to get this living by sight, not by faith. As long as I see it, I know it, I'm good. I'm happy. But living by faith, this is something for me that, you know what, is unshakable. It's shakable. It's, it's not in control. And, you know, this is the challenge. So that's why my question today, are we as disciples today living by faith or by sight? Are we living this controlled comfort Christianity that everything is you know, we know what's going to happen. We know how it's going to end. There's no fear, no worry. Or we're living this faith Christianity that, you know, we don't know what's coming. We don't know what's expected. You know, God didn't call us to live 
a normal life. God didn't call us to live a comfort and controlled led Christianity. My second point, God called us to be different. Are we different? You know, in Mark chapter one, when Jesus called his first disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men that actually are fishing from death to life, not from life to death. You know, when they, when they take a fish out of life, they take it to death. He goes, no, I'm going to ask you to go and fish people from death spiritually to life spiritually. Jesus called his disciples. He called us to a life of action, to a life of going, to a life of moving, to a life of transforming and changing people's life. He called us to be ambassadors for him, to reconcile people with God. He called us to proclaim good news for all nations. That's what the Bible said. He called us to share Jesus in season and out of season. Honestly, is there an out of season time for us to share? This is amazing. He called us to be fruitful in our personal life and others, to face life and persecution, to break silence and to proclaim Jesus, Jesus on rooftops. He called us to be peacemakers, but also to break peace in so many different situations. He called us to be different. He called us to ride the waves of change. Are we riding these waves of change? You know, COVID-19 is a sudden wave. COVID-19, a sudden wave that actually shaked our boats and rocked our lives, shaked our in control life, our comfort Christianity. I know it have shaken it out there in the US, all over the world, in Lebanon, in any country. It makes all the difference how we react because we're different. All the difference. How do we react? It is a wave of change. You know, the world after COVID-19 will never be the same. It will never be the same. Or these waves will wipe us and drown us. Or these waves will change us so we can change others. You know, in uh, the book of Numbers, in chapter 13 and 14, and I know many of you know the story of the 12 spies. They were sent to spy the land, the promised land. And you know, they came back with the reports. 10 of them came with a negative and discouraging report. By their sight, they saw it's impossible. They came and they influence the people negatively to the point that the people were willing to go back to, 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 to the life of slavery, even though it's slavery, but they prefer to go back to the controlled life that they know what's going to happen to the comfort zone where they, they are used to, you know, it's always better to go back to the common, what my life is, even if it's slavery. And that's what they did with their negative report. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they looked not by sight, by faith. And they said, we can, we can do it. We can make the difference. We can make the change because we're different. And you know what? That's what happened. Even though all the nation with their lack of faith died, but Caleb and Joshua did it. And they walked in the promised land with a victory. Who are we today? Who are you today? The 10 spies or the two that hold the positive news, the good news, the spirit of the Lord, the, the, the living hope that makes all the change because we're different. Today, our reaction is different. Are we like everybody around us? Worry, in fear, we don't know what's going to happen when people are around us, us as disciples, 
holding, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the living hope. Are we discouraging the surrounding around us? Or we're bringing hope of change with these waves of change? Or we're bringing hope of salvation? Or we're bringing good news of Jesus? Or when people around us are discouraged, worry, are in fear? Who are you today? What are you doing today? Are we different and changing the world or not? Are we like Joshua and Caleb? You know, my, uh, my third point, it's called, you are a prophet for the nation. You know, in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter one and in verse five, I love this verse. Look what it says. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. God says here, you're very special for God. He knew you. He knew me before we were formed in our mother wombs. He set us apart to be prophets for the nations. He gave us his Holy Spirit. Not to keep it for us. He gave us the salvation. Not to keep it selfishly for us. He goes, I give it to you. Go and change the world. You are a prophet for all nations. Go make a difference. Go and proclaim the good news. You know, COVID-19 is here to test our faith. COVID-19 is here to test really what we are made from. Are we living by that faith, are we different? Uh, do we believe we are called and set apart by God to be prophets for all nations? You know, I, I, I love it when, when Jeremiah, you know, in, in Jeremiah chapter 20 and, and verse 9, I love it when Jeremiah was so discouraged by, by sharing his faith and talking about God and no one is listening. So he got discouraged to a point. He go, I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm not going to preach anymore. And this verse goes like this in Jeremiah 29. He goes, his word in my heart is like fire. I am weary of holding it in. He goes, I can't. I decided to stop, but his word in me is like fire. It's burning inside. I am weary of holding not speaking, not sharing, not talking about God. You know what? We're giving so many gifts. Are we using what we're being given to change the world? The harvest is plentiful. We have never seen so many people searching for God, searching for the truth. Young, singles, campus, educated. We have never seen so many asking even through virtual social media, to Zoom, through any, any internet. You know, when we used to meet and gather, we never had so many come. We never had so many reach out. Now we have so many people. The harvest is plentiful. But are the workers fired up? Are the workers ready to ride the waves of change and go and change the world? Or we're allowing this, this wave to wipe us, to take over. Are we actually happy to go back to the controlled, normal, comfort Christianity we're in, which will never change us and never change others? Or we're willing to go with this wave of change? And, and let God direct us, let the Holy Spirit di direct us. Take us wherever you want, whatever you want us to do. We want to go. We want to build a church of Christ that the gates of Hades will never overcome. Never. That's what Jesus said. My church, the gates of Hades will never overcome. Are we building this kind of church of Christ? You go and you read in Acts 2 about the first century church. It changed the world. It reached all over. You know, when you read the scriptures in Acts 2, you go like, I want to be part of this church. But we are this church. 
We can be this church today. This is our chance. The church is not a place we go to. Now we can't go to a place. But we are all over the world. We are online. We can reach all the world. We have never in Beirut. We always reach to people in our surrounding of the church building. But now through the virtual lessons we're giving and, 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 and worship on Sunday and Bible talks and, 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 and first principles, deep roots, classes we're giving, we're reaching all over Lebanon. You know, we, we have never had so much growth. Never. 25%, 30%. You know, we are a church of 70 people. We have about 40 people studying the Bible. We are actually heading towards planting three new cities by the end of this year. We never thought about this before COVID-19. But now God is directing us. God is changing things. We either ride these waves of change or we either stay and die. And you know, disappear like so many others before us. Or we can make all the difference. You know, brothers and sisters, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what are your challenges and how tough they are. But I know something. There are hearts out there who are empty and weary and afraid. They need hope. They need faith. They need living hope. They need a change. They need to hold on to what we have. Let's go out and share it. You might be facing so many challenges today. You might be facing so many troubles today. You might, go in, you might be going through a lot in your life like us and so many others all around the world. It's tough on us. Never Jesus said it's going to be easy. He goes, if you want to live as a righteous disciple, you will be persecuted. You will face troubles. You will face sickness. You will face so many difficulties. All your brothers and sisters are going through these challenges all over the world. We can either stand by faith, ride the waves of change and be different, be fishers of men, be those who are special, that are set apart to be prophets, to change the world. And we can say with the prophet Habakkuk, and I love this verse so much. And it's in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines. Though the olive corp fails and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the high. Amazing. Amazing. Whatever is the situation, whatever is the challenges, I will rejoice in the Lord. And I want to make sure my rejoicing my security, my, my living hope will actually affect those around me, will actually change those people around me. They will look at me and they will see something different about this person. I want what you have, no matter what's going on. Brothers and sisters, let's ride the waves of change. Let's make a difference. Let's look by faith, not by sight. Let's really be different fishers of men. Let us remember that we are prophets called by God. May God be with you. I love you all. As we take communion, we're going to sing.
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I will worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His soul. near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore forever Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We are so excited about all that God is doing right here in Broward County, Florida. Thank you, Mufid, for an amazing message. I appreciate you calling us higher in our faith. That was awesome, Mufid. Thank you so much for preaching to us today. And I do have a couple of announcements for everybody. One is we're gonna be starting a new series starting this Wednesday. Uh, from the book of Colossians titled Rooted. 
and that is for everyone in the Riverside ministry except for two groups and one of those are the counts group uh, they're going to be doing a marriage class if you've already signed up for that you are in but if you are not signed up for the class uh, you missed out this time around but you will be with us doing the, uh, the class uh, from the book of Colossians now if you are part of the Spanish ministry David and Susan Arevalo are going to be offering the same class from the book of Colossians in Spanish so make sure that you get the information from them on how to log into Zoom. You will be sent out those links uh, as soon as possible. Also, uh, we are going to be sending out a survey to all of the Riverside Ministry about in-person church. Uh, I know that we have been cleared to have in-person church as soon as we're able to get our list of requirements from the health department and from the county in order. That is going to take approximately three or four weeks to be able to get in order. There are about 30 different requirements that we have to meet, so we want to pull everybody before we just decide uh, to pull the trigger on something like that. So please be looking for that in your inbox and be filling that out. It's three short questions. We love you all. It's been great to be with you at service today. Have a great day. Have a great day. My song, y'all. Praise is heard all around the world. Come on, woo! Don't be afraid to dance. It's the way for God. We worshiping Him. Come on, guys. Come on. Ha ha ha! Lord, Your love has saved us. Lord, Your love has saved us. Precious blood has bathed us. Thank you. <laughs> now Your message takes us. Sing it with one voice, they are shouting, sing it highly.